Hello and welcome to my channel Haley Marie Vintage. Today is not a sewing project despite the fact I'm in my sewing project kickoff space. It's that it's early in the morning and this has the best lighting in my apartment. So today I am going to a big sale. I'm very excited about it. Hey Spooky, can we not? That's a good girl. So it is held by the Snohomish County Clothing and Textile Advisors. So they, you, you never, again, she never cares. These have been sitting on the dining room table with no interest from her. Here, come here. Basically, it's a giant fabric sale, um, and it's like really, really, really cheap prices. My understanding is they are selling the fabric for $2 a pound, which is pretty insane. So I'm pretty excited to go check this out. I haven't been. This is, I think, their 13th sale or something like that. So this has happened a long time. I did know about it last year and the year before, but they were just either weekends I was out of town or I was just feeling too anxious and overwhelmed, which to be fair, my anxiety is still like a 10 out of 10 today. I just still really want to go. It is not only fabric, it also has a ton of notions and patterns. From what I understand, a lot of their donors are like older people, so I'm hoping to maybe pick up some good vintage patterns or vintage fabric. I do know that they usually have wool and silk there, which is pretty exciting. What is your deal? It is currently before 8. I have an early entry ticket that gets me in at 9 a.m. The sale opens to everybody at 10. I'm anticipating it to be quite crowded. I do know they sold 90 early admission tickets. And this room is pretty big, but that still feels like a lot of people in a smaller space. So I'm feeling a little bit nervous about that. I'm still really, really, really excited. And if it's too overwhelming, I'll just not buy that much, which is totally fine. I don't need to buy a ton. But I thought it'd be fun to take y'all with me. I will try to film a little bit at the sale and then I'll show you what I picked up after. But yeah, I'm feeling very excited. I'm wearing my veggie sweater. It is a very cold day here in Seattle, even though it is mid-June. If you're from the Pacific Northwest, you're very familiar with the term January, which is we basically like have a beautiful May and then June is like cloudy and gross. And kind of the rule in Seattle is summer doesn't actually hit till like July 4th weekend. It's cold. I'm cold. I'm also wearing jeans. It's a weird vibe. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to start driving up to the sale. It's about 45 minutes from me. And then I will hopefully get to show you some footage of what it looks like. This here is the line for getting in for pre-sale and then the line over there is for after the pre-sale is done. There's already people lining up. It's pretty wild. This seems like a lot of people for pre-sale. Once in, I'm going through stacks of fabric. I thought this was funny because this is a fabric I just used. I did not donate this. As you look around, you can see there's just piles and piles of tables. They're pretty sorted and pretty easy to figure out, but you just kind of have to like go through stacks because there might be something you want more towards the bottom than like right at the top. So this was a little bit of a like sort through. They also have tons of boxes of notions, which are all like bias tapes, hooks and eyes, everything like that. There's a ton available. I had more than my pick. I was here earlier than most people. So I was just going through looking for like things like overall buckles and then like studs and things as well as snaps and hooks and eyes. I think after this, I will not need to buy hooks and eyes ever again. And then there were also trims and laces, and I also liked that there was a table of ironing tools, such as hams and sausages and other shapes that could be useful. And here is one more look at this very crowded room. I'm currently waiting in line, but as you can see, this is quite a zoo, so if you get overstimulated, come prepared. All right, we are post-sale. Bear with me on audio and shakiness. I didn't plan on doing an after, but like I am dripping sweat. It was hot, I was carrying. Here is bag number one. And then I have some notions and some more fabric. Oh, and I'm so tired. Um, and I have a big event later today too for something else. So gonna have to, I have to go make a fabric store run. Ironically, I was hoping to get um, some tool there. There was no tool to be found. So I'm gonna have to go make a fabric store run. And then after that, I can go home and rest before getting going again at one o'clock. Woo! All right, I'll see ya when I'm showing you the spoils of this haul. Alrighty, we are back with the haul. As you can see, I did rather well. I want you to keep in mind that all of this was $81, which is pretty nuts. I like don't even know where to start. I got a bunch of hooks and eyes. So I got a big stack of these. So basically all the notions you see from me, so that's lace, ribbon, buttons, anything like that. I spent $8 on everything you see here. These are just your normal hook and eyes. I just picked up more because I'm a hoarder. 
Then I have snaps here in this pile. I also have picked up a few more heavy duty snaps. I don't own any heavy duty snaps. Spooky, what are we doing? Spooky is fixated on something weird right now. And then I got some covered button tool kits. And then the rest of my notions are under this lace, so I'll go over that in a second. I got one thing of bias binding because it's a fun little red gingham one. It's really cute. I'll have, as always, a little photo. I guess we can start with some of the trims. I got a bunch of this trim, which is what I use with uh, gunny sacks. It's what I loop up the front. I thought this came with a lot of nice colors. Some are maybe a little bit thicker than what I would use, but I can use those more for like a peasant blouse or like kind of the sub for elastic channeling that a lot of like 1940s stuff does. The biggest thing you'll see here from the lace I got is I got a bunch of cotton trim like this that you can gather down. That's just a gap in my stash that I very much notice. This is the number one thing that I am having to order off Etsy for a project if I don't have it on hand. So I picked up that one. I picked up this one. And these ones I will have to gather myself. And then a whole bunch of what's in here is also that. This guy though that I picked up, it's like this fun, weird, goofy, bias, like triangle trim that I just thought was fun and has some potential to it for like a fun project or for something costumey. And then yeah, here I have a bunch more of those. These ones are actually already gathered. Trims, a whole bunch of them. Cause yeah, like I said, this is just a gap that I very much have in my stash that drives me up a wall. And then I don't really like Joanne's options for these. So I wanted to get more of these in my stash. This one particularly is really gorgeous. I'm gonna, so you can see them all up close, I'll have photos over here. This one's just like a basic crochet one, nothing too exciting. This one is like just little flowers. But yeah, no, I just, I've, I've noticed the gap. I noticed because I've been sewing so much for my stash this year, I feel like I've done like a good job starting to notice the gaps in my stash. And I felt like this was a good opportunity to fill those gaps at this because it was so cheap, right? This is another gathered trim. Uh, nothing very special about this one other than it will work as a gathered trim. This is a black sequined insert lace. It has like little butterflies on it. It's really cute. It reminds me of some of the stuff I picked up in Korea. This is like a weird sheer nylon lace. And then this one is an absolutely gorgeous, I think, antique lace. Again, all of this I paid $8 for, which is bananas. I also got this twill tape that's like nice and, I mean, it's very bright colored. I can probably only use this in like dark applications, but it's really nice and soft and that cannot be said of all twill tapes. Here we have like the buttons I picked up. I got these cute overall buckles. They had not that many overall buckles and I handed them off most of them to a woman who was looking for them. And then these, I think they're suspender clips, but I'm not quite sure what they are, but I picked them up anyway. I'll put a photo of these here so you can see. I also got some Western buttons. These are not what I thought I got. I'm bummed. I thought I bought white horseshoe ones and these are kind of like coppery leaf ones. They're still cute but they're not what I thought they were, so I'm a little bit bummed. And then I got some giant buttons because I feel like I'm always looking for bigger buttons. And then I just got a ton of novelty buttons. I have like cats, violets, houses, this weird flower pot that I thought could be cute to embroider onto something and then embroider little flowers coming out of the pot. Some giant flowers, some little like plasticky porcelain hearts. And then I got a couple uh, heavy duty snap fastener kits. I just generally think kits like this can be helpful to have. So I picked them up because you don't actually see these that often anymore. I mean, I guess you probably see them in normal stores, but I thrift most of my supplies. I also found these fun, they're silk ribbon appliques. I've not really seen anything like this, but it's really nice because then you don't have to do your own embroidery. I'm not quite sure exactly how they'll work, but I hadn't seen them before, so I picked them up. And then I guess we'll go through ribbon. This first ribbon is really gorgeous. I see a lot of this ribbon on Etsy and it's usually like $14 a yard. So to buy all this for pennies on the dollar was pretty exciting. These are just some thin ribbons that I also sometimes use for lacings or various things. And so they're so cheap, I thought I would add these two colors to my stash. They're both colors I like. Oh, fusible bias tape. Not quite sure how to use this, but it's clover. Border bias, fusible bias, bias tape. Any project of double fold bias. Huh. So I'll have to take this out, check it out. The reason I picked it up is because it's really, really soft and it's actual cotton and most bias tapes aren't anymore. And then I got this cute little purple ribbon that has lace edging. I got this cute little moon 
moons and stars and I think it's so so pretty and this B one I didn't realize was wire edged so I'm actually a little bit bummed at that I thought this B one was just normal ribbon so I'm gonna actually look up some applications for wired ribbon I actually think this would really make very cute Christmas bows or things like that so we'll see this one is another kind of more antique one that I've seen sold for high amounts it's very like mint brocade and I love that who knows back in the day when this was because it's definitely on a typewriter but this was 215 a yard not what I paid obviously these all came in that grab bag and then I got this really cute little this was very 60s reminiscent ribbon to me but that's it from everything that was in my eight dollars worth of finding bags which is pretty crazy and then I picked up a couple of curve drafters I am not currently drafting my own patterns but I do plan to in the future like way in the future but also I do trace patterns relatively frequently and having a curve on hand is not a bad idea and I also got this French curve I think both of these they ended up being six dollars each she, she said two for six dollars and then she wrote them down for six dollars each which is fine because everything was so cheap there so it's not a huge deal and the money goes to sewing programs for people and I want more people to learn to sew so that's fine with me to have paid twelve dollars instead of six for these which actually when you think about the fact I paid eighty one dollars for everything and these are 12 of that $81. It's actually bonkers what I paid for everything. But yeah, I am pleased. Oh, and I did have a French curve and then I sat on it and then it snapped. So I think metal is a better tool for me. All right, I also got a new sleeve ham, a sleeve roll, sausage roll. I bought one that like is commercially available and it has polyester mixed in so it melts. So I picked up this nice wool one. And then this ham I thought was bigger than my current ham, but it is not now that I'm looking at the two next to each other. So I guess now I have two really solid hams. I do think this one narrows down more at the point, which I guess could be a nice shape, but it's honestly ridiculous to own as many sewing hams as I do. I mean, I press a lot, but it's it's excessive. But now we're to the fabric. I actually weighed all, each one of these individually so I can tell you exactly how much the yardage cost. We'll start with this pile then go through this pile. These are my exciting wool purchases down at the bottom. But when I went in there I was looking for rayon stuff to make corsets and stuff to make overalls. I was fairly successful in limiting myself. Oh and one more thing I was also looking for linings for things like coats that would be cute if you see them. This first guy is a beautiful little rayon on. I have two yards of it, so it'll probably make a blouse. This whole two yards of fabric was $1.63 total, which is super wild. This guy here is something I picked up for either lining, although I do like the color enough to potentially use it for not lining. There's three yards of this and it was $1. And how I calculated this, this was like eight ounces, which is half a pound and it was $2 per pound. So I weighed each of these and then I multiplied them by two. This is really pretty. So this might end up more as a blouse because I love this color. I think this color is super electric and fun. This guy here is a kind of like polka dotty nylon. I got this just to make like a slip or something out of. It has only one way stretch, which as what I like in a slip. So yeah, I picked that up for that purpose. Uh, this guy I'm super excited about, even though it is definitely polyester, I've been looking at fabrics like this. So this is like one of those like sheer stripes and it's in a beautiful mint color. And I've been looking at silk fabrics like these online. Of course, this is not silk, but for this whole yardage of four and a quarter yards being a dollar fifty, I will happily take that it's not silk and it'll give me a good practice run on making sure that like I like working with this type of material and I like figuring out the stripe and sewing it and all that jazz on the type of pattern before I actually invest in something pricier. And then this guy is a really beautiful yardage of a border print silk. I think this is gonna have to be a blouse. It's too lightweight and there's not enough for anything else. It's three and a half yards. I paid 38 cents for this you guys and it's beautiful beautiful silk but it's super sheer. I'm kind of thinking about how I want to use it. I think it could be a pretty blouse if placed very carefully. This hair is a denim. I'm thinking of making like a corset or something with it. This is $1.50 and I have a yard of it so it's gonna have to basically be a corset or something. This guy here is a really nice plaid wool. It's a pretty large scale wool. I have one and a half yard of this so it'll probably end up being like a skirt or something and I paid $1.70 
75 cents for this. It also washed really well. I did pre-wash all of these. I know there's like controversy on whether you should pre-wash wool. For me, I like to see how something survives the washer before I invest the time in sewing with it. And obviously these are different prices. I might not pre-wash wool if I get it at like kind of a premium, but a lot of times I do pre-wash because I want to get some shrinkage out. I think this wool is super stunning and I can't wait to make a little skirt with it. I think I might just basically make a really basic pleated skirt or I might do a pair of short overall things. Um, I would have to fully line those because I don't really like wool touching me like that. But this guy here is a corduroy, which is really exciting. I think it's super cute. It's a floral corduroy. I paid $1.50 for it. I have two yards. So this is probably going to be a short overall set because it doesn't have quite as much as I would like. I did have to give up a skirt set that I really loved because it didn't fit me anymore that was made of a floral corduroy. So I'm going to see if I can squeeze a skirt yardage out of that. The bib doesn't take much. It's really just the skirt to figure out. And then similarly, this is like a very cute little stamp themed fabric that I think would make a really cute pair of like short overalls. And I, I really like this fabric. I would say, yeah, it's kind of like a denim. I guess I basically paid $2.20 for this and I have a yard and a half. This will definitely be a shorts overall thing. This guy here is a a really beautiful shirting fabric. I extra, I mean, I always put the pattern up here. I mean like the fabric detail, but it's really interesting because it has like these flowers woven into these like pink stripes. It's probably a poly blend. Um, I have three yards of this and I spent $2 total. So this is, I guess, exactly a pound. Hi, spooky. You should not give people the butt. You should give them your face. Of course. If you can do it and not fall, go for it. Mm, you didn't seem confident. Okay, you're getting your spooky fix here while I talk about these fabrics. But yeah, this is really cute. I'm excited to use it. And I haven't really seen anything like it. So uh, that was a good purchase for me. Sorry, baby. This here, I don't totally know what this is. I think it's like kind of a cotton rayon -y thing. It has like really good flow to it. I think I'll probably make like a pretty flowy dress from this. Definitely not gathered though. This is too thick of fabric to gather. It will have to all gores. This would have been $2.63. There's two and seven eighth yards of it. However, it's pretty wide. I want to say it's 60 inches wide, but it's just like this nice stripe and the stripes kind of are like broken up and varied. It's really quite a nice fabric and I'm excited to use it. Spooky's sitting on it but you can kind of see it under her this is a black wool with a little bit of stretch to it it's quite lightweight i have some 40s suits patterns that i would like to tackle that i'm kind of scared of and i think this will be like a good wearable mock-up fabric i have five and three eighths yards of this the biggest thing is this wool has a little bit of a smell to it like a i don't know how else to explain it but it has a little bit of a burnt hair smell to it and it does have a little bit of elastic in it which is not my fave for this yardage of wool to kind of work with for a wearable mock-up for uh, $6.38. So it's like a dollar a, I mean, it's a little bit more than a dollar a yard, but I just felt like this was a good one to add to my stash because I do plan on tackling kind of those more challenging suiting projects eventually. And it's always good to have something that you can wear, but is also fairly low stakes in your stash. We are on to our last stacks of fabric. Here I have a rayon. This has like just a pretty tulip pattern to it. I have four yards of this and it was $3.20. Cents. I plan on, I have a bunch of patterns in my stash that require using rayon and rayon is a little bit pricier of a material. A lot of time the rayon that I like to buy is up at like $16, $17 a yard. So I want to have some things to again make those wearable mock-ups with. So I picked up this rayon for that. I also really like this rayon and I think it'll make a really elegant 1940s dress, which is those, those are the patterns I have in my stash. This similarly is also a rayon that I mainly got for that like 1940s stash to give it a try. This pattern is maybe a little bit big for me, but again, it's a good one to make a wearable mock-up with. It was $2.63 and I have three and five eighths yards, but it is pretty wide at 58 inches. I thought that just both of these rayons would be good mock-up rayons and I do actually have another rayon in here. So I did achieve my goal. This one here is a denim ish. I don't know. It might be wool, honestly. I don't know what this fabric is. I have two yards of it and I think I'm going to make a skirt out of it. It's a nice like bottom weight. To me, it feels like wool and it also to me smells like wool. Wool has a certain smell to it sometimes. So I plan on just making a skirt out of this plain navy denim -y wool thing. My skirt stash just got quite depleted from um, eating weight and I have been committed to making some new skirts and that was that for 
for that wow words this i have three yards of a it cost me a dollar 88 it's this like textured jacquard it's really quite lovely this i will probably make like a blouse out of i guess there's kind of a lot of fabric here for a blouse three yards actually three yards isn't crazy for a blouse because i like really big sleeves people always like laugh because i was talking because people are like what are you looking for i'm like i need like three and up yardage and they're like what are you making i'm like well my blouses have like balloon sleeves and then i make 1950s dress so i just need massive amounts of yardage this guy I'm not going to use as a lining because the texture would drive me nuts as a lining, but as a blouse I often wear things under my blouses to make them a little bit more comfy. I am fine with that fabric. It is probably a polyester. It could be a rayon. And then this guy here is a rayon batik. I've been wanting a batik rayon in this color scheme for a really long time. I, it's my kind of like favorite like periwinkle type color scheme. I spent two dollars on this and I have three yards. I have a set already chosen out that I want to make this into. That will be very like summery and beachy and fun and then last we're to our last stack of wools this wool I think I will make I have that girty coat pattern and I really want to make like the blazer with like the kind of fuller like looser sleeves maybe but I also really love the balloon sleeves on this so I don't know I don't quite know exactly what I'm gonna do with this but I know it has to be fully lined and not touch my skin because I hate the way this fabric feels but it's really really beautiful and lined it won't bother me especially like in a coat form where yeah it's not gonna touch my skin this I spent four dollars and 25 cents on and I have three and a quarter yards of 60 inch fabric which is good because it is a little bit directional I picked this up the reason I fell in love with it is it has just like that speckle woven into it and colors I really like they're kind of like eastery spring colors so they'll work really really well for me next up this is a bit of a story this was a uh, I have a ton of yardage of this I think I think I have like five or four yards of 58 inches it was seven dollars and 25 cents so I bought this it was cream I pre-washed it stupidly cream and this blue wool fabric this is why i do think this is a natural fiber it bled like crazy so i then ruined this wool so then we went on a little adventure and we dyed this wool purple using the machine method it is a smidge bit splotchy in certain spots my friend helped me with it who's really good at dyeing things um, and i'm not so experienced with dyeing things yeah this wool i'm not gonna say it's like ruined it's just i'm really glad that i only spent seven dollars and 25 cents on it because I was planning this beautiful cream wool coat and alas it will now be a purple coat. This I will probably use as a wearable mock-up for whatever I end up doing with it because yeah it's really gorgeous and I'm not mad at it. I just definitely was excited because I had been planning to make a cream wool coat for a while and I thought I had found this perfect fabric and then I ruined it with my own stupidity. So that's okay. I'm now going to have a beautiful purple coat. Again we're going to see what that one turns out to be as a beautiful purple coat and then last oh, this wool is so nice uh last is this beautiful caramel colored wool this i was also excited about because this was actually something i was planning on buying in the fall for a coat i have three and five eighths yards of 60 inch wide i spent six dollars on this it's soft it's nice it definitely i guess like felt it a tiny bit in the wash but i just like to again like i know you're not supposed to pre-wash wool but i again want to see what happens when it gets wet and agitated i guess because I do live in Seattle. It is inevitably gonna get a little bit wet and damp. If I can wash my clothes by hand, I will do so. So I did, yeah, I did pre-wash this. It definitely didn't ruin it. I still think it looks really nice. And yeah, to spend $6 on this and I have this project all planned out, I think you'll see it in the winter and I'm pretty excited to not spend $20 a yard plus on the fabric for it. So now I have this beautiful caramel wool and I'm gonna get to just make it with a uh, $6 which is awesome. So that concludes everything that I bought at the sale. As you can see, it was pretty bonkers. I can't believe I spent only $81 on all this stuff. That is wild to me, but I'm obviously very happy with that price. So yeah, if you live in this area, definitely recommend this sale from the Snohomish Clothing and Textiles Association. Really, really awesome sale. Definitely worth checking out. Next year, I'm gonna hopefully go again and get early bird tickets again. That is the goal, but definitely also find your local basically guilds and um, associations and see if they put anything like this on in your area. In Seattle we don't have a ton of opportunities for like this quality of fabric at that cheap but I do know other areas do have more like old people who craft I 
guess for lack of a better term is that that's why I always go thrifting when I travel is because most other states have just higher populations of older people with hobbies than um, maybe perhaps Washington does. But yeah, that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me, seeing what this was like, and seeing this quite insane haul. If you want to see these get made up, definitely subscribe and stick around. I'd love to have you. I post every single week at 8 a.m. Pacific time on Friday, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!